Hey, Service Nation, good to be with you today. I am actually from a, a new place we bought in Prescott. We've got carpets going in, so I've been banished to the living room. Uh, just moving in, got a bunch going on, uh, but I figured I'd enjoy my beautiful view. It's like 80 out, and it's lovely, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. And uh, today, we're gonna talk about leveraging capital for your service business. Um, I know you guys and gals, you are all in committed to growing your service business, but you don't know if you should borrow money, if you need money, how much money you should be, you know, invest in your business. Should it, should it be bootstrap friends, family banks, all that sort of stuff. Today, we're going to cover everything capital and make sure you leave here kind of knowing how to look at it and what to do. So um, the problem is we don't know. The cost is if you don't go all in with your business and you're not willing to kind of do this thing for real, um, you're probably better off for a job. I gotta tell you, I've had, uh, <laughs> honestly, I'm 46. I haven't had a job since I was 21, something like that. So it's been a while. Um, but having been in business 25 years, I have learned if you are a dip your toe in kind of guy, kind of gal, whether it comes with time, money, risk, uh, and again, we're gonna talk about risk. It's, we're, we're not saying that you should just dumbly put money into your business. That's crazy. If you're gonna um, be successful in business, you absolutely need to understand how to manage capital um, wisely, right? So that means we don't overvalue it or undervalue it, right? Undervalue is, um, oh, I just, as long as I put it in my business, I can't lose, right? That's a, that's a great way to lose a bunch of money in a short order. Um, the other way is uh, I can't put, wait, invest any money in my business. I can't take any risk. That's another great way to lose, right? If we're gonna do this thing, we gotta do it all in. Um, and if you're not willing to do that, that's totally fine. You're probably just better off with a job. So um, the first thing I want to get out of the way is I've been in lots of different businesses, manufacturing, and I had a car dealership, and certainly a uh, service master commercial cleaning, and obviously I'm in coaching right now. And some of those businesses were really capital intensive, and some were not. Um, most service businesses that I have dealt with are not capital intensive, right? You can go from the low end with a um, you know cleaning company whether it be houses or pools or something like that, you, you might need a truck or a car and some supplies and not very expensive up to like HVAC where it starts to get more expensive. But even electric, most of us can just kind of get started with a truck and some supplies that we probably already have. So um, there are businesses that are much more capital intensive. The problem is a lot of people give you coaching like, oh, you gotta borrow a bunch of money. You don't have to borrow a bunch of money without really understanding your business. So there is no such thing as every business owner needs to borrow a bunch of money or no business owner needs to borrow a bunch of money. It's more nuanced than that if it really depends on the business model that you have. And for most service businesses, um, you can start with a couple hundred bucks to less than 10,000, right? So it's not like you need tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands to get started. And honest to goodness, I've had access to capital and I've had times where I wasn't, I didn't have access to capital. And more often than not, the lack of access to capital forced me to get creative. And the creativity is always gonna be more valuable than, um, than the capital itself. So we wanna make sure that we don't swing one way or another. You know, one way is I'm not gonna risk any time, money, anything on my business. I just wanna magically be rich. That's never gonna work. And the other one is I don't have to use any critical thinking. Any money I put in my business is automatically gonna get a return because uh, that's crazy talk. So, all right, that said, we gotta acknowledge. So the good news is for most service businesses, it doesn't cost a lot to get started, right? We, we might need hundreds or thousands, generally not tens of thousands. Um, and even if you're like, oh, you don't understand, my, I need a bunch of equipment, you can rent it, borrow it, buy it, use. There's lots of ways to get around that. Again, creativity will go over capital all the time. Um, that's good news. The bad news is because there's such a low barrier to entry, a lot of us kind of get this like, I could do it on a shoestring, so I should do it on a shoestring. The reality is because your competitors are all bootstrapping and doing kind of everything on the cheap, I know what, what, you know, what kind of... Um, advertising could I get for free or coaching or what, you know, there was one to get something for free. Maybe I can take on a partner um, because they're all doing that. And that mindset, you have a huge opportunity in saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to invest in things. And my, my standard for investment is going to be ROI return on investment. Right? So that's the first thing we've got to get away from moving from that's expensive or that's cheap to that has a positive ROI or a negative ROI. Um, employees and unsuccessful people look at things as expensive or cheap wealthy, successful people look at things as positive or negative ROI, right? So if I spend $10,000 on an advertising campaign that gives me half a million dollars worth of customers, that would be a cheap ROI, right? That was a cheap campaign. If I spend $1,000 on an advertising campaign that doesn't give me any results, that was expensive, right? So you understand how they can be cheap and expensive. The, the thing that costs more money can be a lot cheaper, so to speak, than the thing that costs uh, not much money. If it's wasted, it's wasted. That's very expensive. Uh, I call that an expensive education. So at least you get something, you get the education, but I'd rather get the positive ROI. Um, and kind of the secondary corollary, 
the secondary corollary. That's a crazy thing. Don't try and say that. It's a, it's for advanced broadcasters only. <laughs> um, is this belief that all debt is bad or all debt is good? So we talked about this earlier in terms of investing in your company. Um, you know, the two extremes of because it's my company and I'm investing in me, I can invest wantonly. Whatever I put in is going to be fine. That that'll get you broke. Or um, because it's my company, I'm too scared to bet on myself, and I'm not going to beg, borrow, and don't steal. Beg and borrow. Um, that leverages out to debt, right? So a lot of us have that same thing, right? I'm never gonna borrow money, I don't borrow money, I don't believe in debt. Well, in business, if you're gonna go all in, sometimes there might be a time for debt and um, you've gotta be willing. The flip side is, I've had many a broken business model that I tried to save with debt. So you have to be careful to make sure if and when you do debt, and again, same thing, it's just the ROI, right? So we gotta get away from that's a lot of money, that's a little money. Believe it or not, even that's an expensive interest rate or a low interest rate. A lot of people get really uptight about interest rates. Um, and again, obviously, if there's, you can get the lower rate, get the lower rate. But what's expensive is, let's say, and again, please don't hear me saying to go out there and get high, high interest loans. It's more that I'm trying to get you to think about things in a certain way than recommending or not recommending any loan products, right? We don't sell any loan products. I don't do any lending. So you don't have to worry about me trying to manipulate you to, to, to you know, buy something from me or, or you know, be a customer for a lender. All right, that said, again, look at it in, in ROI. So if I get an interest-free loan on a brand new car, right, they got all those going out, to me that's bad debt, right? Because that car, say I spend 40 grand on it today, we pretty well know that it's gonna be worth 20 grand three years from now, maybe three and a half, maybe two and a half, but give or take three years from now, my $40,000 interest-free loan has turned into a, a $20,000 asset. Um, not great. Now, if I get a loan that's 20% a year, which is a ton, right? We all agree that's a lot of money. Um, but I borrow that same $40,000 and I invest it in a piece of equipment that's gonna make me a quarter million dollars in the next two or three years, that's cheap, right? So please don't hear me saying, just pay whatever interest and don't worry about it. Uh, hey, Jessica, <laughs> she says congrats on the new move. Uh, looks beautiful. I thank you, it is beautiful, we love it up here. Um, only thing is too small. I was not, it's not too small for our family, it's perfect for our family, but if it was bigger, we could do an event up here and invite everyone up here, but uh, I'd have to do a very expensive, very small event because we got like two or three, uh, two or three places guests could sleep. Um, what the heck were we talking about? Yeah, so the, the bad debt, good debt, and um, understanding positive ROI, negative ROI. So I'm not saying go get an expensive loan, but make sure that we're looking more at what am I gonna use this money for? How am I gonna get paid? How secure is this? And um, that's what I'm really gonna look at because I've had low interest debt and I've had high interest debt. The big thing I wanna make sure is we make sure that we're not using debt to cover a broken business model. So many people do that. Um, and again, without being self-serving, because right now we don't, we, we will offer coaching products at some point, we don't now. Um, I'd invest in the coaching, right? So I've done that before where I had a bad business model and I thought, and we tell ourselves, oh, it's just cash flow. People are slow paying, I had a bad month. We tell ourselves, and that may be the case if it just literally, you know, once a year, once every couple of years, you have a bad month or something gets hot. That's that's a literal cash flow issue that we short term debt we can use. But let me tell you how it happens in real life. You'll have a bad business model, but you won't know it because you'll still have good months. But your cat, you, the way you collect cash isn't set up properly. Your margins probably aren't proper. You don't have a, a scaling system, so you don't really have the foundational pieces. And it feels like you've got cash problems because of that or you feel to give cash problems because they're cash problems. Oh, if this vendor would just pay more. If this, if I could get employees cheaper, if we just think we make a bunch of excuses. The reality is we have a broken business model and we try and get debt to fix it, which is, that's a scary place to be. So if we're ever gonna not do debt, it's when we have a broken business model and we kind of subscribe to the whole, you know, I'm losing money, but I'll make it up in volume, right? That never, never, never works. So always wanna make sure that we're, if we're gonna invest in our business, first and foremost, invest in systems and processes that are gonna make sure that you're profitable, then you can use money to scale that profitability. But don't ever think that debt is gonna take an unprofitable business and make it profitable. What it will really do is just allow you to get down the road faster, um, and then you have the exact same unprofitable business that you did, but you've got all this debt. And if you could have fixed it before the debt, then you'd, you'd be good to go. But now you've got this debt, which makes it harder to fix. And when you do fix it, you still gotta pay off the debt. So be very, very careful if you're trying to use debt. So if you have a very profitable business model, you know it's profitable, that is a time I think debt can be uh, something good. Or if you need the education or like a franchise or systems or processes, that can be debt, debt being good. But to fix a broken business, that will absolutely kill you. Um, and again, guys, gals, the, the reality is, 88% of millionaires, uh, according to US News, were self-made, right? So a lot of us think like, oh, you know, we, we make excuses because we haven't gone all in or 
we haven't done something right that I wasn't born rich or they have an advantage or they had more money or blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, and we think that they, they started off rich and they never borrowed money. 88% <laughs> of them are self-made and I'd probably say more than 88% of them borrowed money at some point in their life. So um, we really wanna make sure that we put the right things in the right perspective and it's really business model systems and processes first. Well, you've really your commitment first, business model systems and processes second. Capital, believe it or not, would be third. And then even create, I probably put creativity above capital and then capital would be below that. Um, you know, just stupid stuff that we get sold into, like, oh, you've got to have a really good credit score, right? That, that, just so you guys know, the whole credit score thing is a scam, right? It goes up and down. It, it's, I still remember when I sold my first business, um, we, I forget what we need, we wanted, went to buy a house or something like that years later, like two, three, four years later, and they're like, you don't have any credit score, you, you, don't, you have bad credit. And uh, or we had no credit because we had we didn't have any debt for years. Um, we just paid for everything cash. So we lost our credit score and like, oh, that's no good. But then you can get a guy that works at Walmart that's been bankrupt two times. He can have a, a 620 credit score, which isn't that great. And he can get a loan. So I'm not saying credit score is bad or good. I'm just saying a lot of people make dumb decisions and borrow credit cards or stuff like that so they can have a good credit score, right? Credit score is fine, but let's not let let's not bow to the god of the credit score, right? We the the be, the better thing than credit score is cash and being being effective and profitable. I'll take a bunch of cash and, and terrible credit over um, the opposite every day of the week. My, my dogs are here by the way, so if you can hear them barking, but they're uh, apparently the carpet guys have upset them so they got to bark. Um all right, so I guess what this really comes down to is I want to change the mindset, right? Everyone thinks about the money. It's never about the minds. It's never about the money. It's always about how we look at the money and our, our attitude towards the money, whether it's debt, capital, um, bank. <laughs> Sorry, I have decided uh, it's time to get loud. And <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear. Hey, quiet. Come here. So I don't know who's doing what, but don't. Like it. Buddy, cut it out. Come here. Lay down. Um, so there you go. That's how to, that's how to take care of dogs. Um, the big thing is we want to look at debt, um, and money. We don't overvalue, which is, oh, if I had money, then I'd be rich. If I had, if I, if I had a rich uncle to lend me money, like that's no good, but we don't want to undervalue it either. Right? So the big thing is we've got to shift your mindset from if I had money, if, if whatever, then I would be successful to if I commit all in myself, I will be successful. Um, and other people are going to have other positives that you don't have and they're going to have other liabilities that you don't have. So some people might have more money than you and they might be younger and better looking, but they're less committed or you might, they might have more. Uh, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. We get, we get people into our programs where we help them transform themselves and their businesses and they all look at each other like, Oh, if I had that guy, or I had that guy, but I get to coach the other guy that they're looking at and that guy's looking at the first guy, you know what I'm saying? So, I want to encourage you that we shift our mindset from external. If I had money, if I had a rich uncle, if everything was just easy, then I could do it and go, it's really me. So some of us born with lots of access to capital, lots of money, and that's fine. That's great. But maybe we're not as creativity, aren't going to work as hard, aren't as committed, um, and don't learn the lessons that we have to. So other people might be like, I was born with no money, but holy crap, I'm just good at business, right? So we really want to focus on our, our personal strengths and weaknesses and not externalize, right? Anytime we external, oh, if I just was better looking, but I Hey, quiet. Um, if this, if that, then I'd be then I'd be good to go, right? That's the that's the bull crap. I'm gonna have to throw my dogs off a cliff here pretty quick. Um, so, the reality is, you could be successful as long as you're willing to do whatever you need to do, and whatever you need to do is almost always just outside of your comfort zone. It almost always involves some sort of risk, whether that's risk of capital. Well, it always involves risk, risk of capital, risk of time, uh, risk of your capital, risk of other capital, other people's capital. Um, the reality is you've just got to be willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do. And you can absolutely stay in your comfort zone and be, be successful. It's just called a job, right? If you have a skill set that you want to apply and you want to work for someone else, what's going to happen is they're going to take all the risk. And then you hear all these people like, oh, the one percenters and you know, the, own, the business owners or whoever make so much more money than your employees. Well, the reality is the business owner, what they don't know is maybe spent 10 years sleeping in that same little you know, office that they started working a hundred hours a week, putting up you know, money that he begged, borrowed and cobbled together from everybody else and risked everything to get to the 10 years. And that's why he makes more. Right. And then, so there's no shame in being the owner and there's no shame in being the worker. And when you're the owner and you put up all that risk, there's no shame in getting massive rewards for that. And there's no shame in being the worker and saying, I'm happy with this wage that I get. I don't want to do all that. Right. So it's more important that you're clear on what you want and what you're willing to commit to get it. So if you are, 
just know if you want to be, if you're like, I'm risk intolerant, I don't want to be outside of my comfort zone. I've got big boundaries around what I'm willing to do. And first of all, those boundaries that they're, you know, legal, ethical, moral, those are good boundaries for a business owner, right? Never uh, would I say, well, if you're not willing to lie, cheat and steal, you can't make it. That's, that couldn't be further from the truth. But outside of that, there should be just about no boundaries, right? Oh, I have to ask my, my parents for money. I have to humble myself and do the work myself. I have to work 20 hours a day. These are the things you have the businesses, business successful business, business owner at some point are probably not those exact things, but things like that are going to require. And if you have kind of this boundary of, I'm not willing to do that. Um, business probably isn't for you. How get a job, um, go that route. If you're all in that often is what it, what it takes. So, um, I guess let me just kind of sum up all the things that we're talking about because it's all so important. Um, the first thing is we need all, in, you are gonna need all in commitment to be successful. Um, to do that, sometimes you're gonna need capital and sometimes you're gonna have to borrow that capital. Um, not as often as you think in the service business, but we want that willingness to, hey, whatever it takes, is, you know, we're not gonna steal it, right? We, we, lie, we don't lie, cheat, or steal, but we will beg and borrow if need be. Um, and we wanna really transition our mindset on capital from having lots of money is good, high interest is bad, good credit score is good, expensive is bad, and, and kind of move into, I'm, we only have two things to invest ever, time and capital, right? Um, and there's two types of each, each, each ones of those, my time and other people's time, and my capital and other people's capital, right? Um, and if we're gonna be successful in business, we have to be willing to risk other people's time and capital as well as our time and capital, right? Certainly if I'm not gonna risk my capital, it makes no sense for me to invest, ask someone else to invest their capital, even if I don't have any, right? If I'm like, all I got is 100 bucks, but I'll risk 100% of it, okay, there you go. And then same with time, right? At the beginning, um, you know, a lot of people get into business because they want time and money freedom. Um, but typically you get much, much, much less time and money freedom for the first couple of years. And then you get more because it takes you the time to get the systems and processes. So number one, we want to transition our thinking about money and capital from, you know, good and bad based on kind of arbitrary things, what feels expensive, how you're raised talking about or thinking about money and, and just boil it down into the business owner's credo, which is ROI, return on investment, right? If I can put this much time out or money out of my time or, or someone else's time or my money or someone else's money and get a positive return on that investment, that's the way I'm going to go. Um, if not, then I'm out. So we really kind of have to relook at how we, and we always want to make sure we infuse that with creativity. So that's the first thing. Second thing is we never want to try and fix a broken business model with more capital. Um, that'll just get, get you broke faster, right? If we're going to infuse capital, it's typically because we've got a model that's working and we want to scale it faster. Um, and we want to make sure it's working on all levels. Sometimes it's profitable on paper, but not on, on cash. Sometimes it's opposite. You've got cash, but if you look at your, your balance sheet, you're bleeding money. So you have to make sure that you're profitable both in cash and in assets and it's consistent. If that's the case, then capital can help accelerate that. Or if you're like, um, you know, obviously I do coaching. So if you're like, Hey, I'm going to use some of my capital buy someone else's 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of experience systems processes. That's really what coaching, what franchising is. Um, that's a great way to use, to invest your capital. Um, the thing we don't want to invest in is dep depreciating assets, right? So systems and processes appreciate because you set up systems and processes once they pay you forever. Um, depreciate assets like we talked about cars and stuff those we don't make so much so we want appreciated assets with a positive roi not depreciating assets that are going to cost us money uh, at all we have to understand that there's a low barrier to entry for service businesses which is good if you don't have a lot of capital but that means our competitors are probably have a, a poor mindset around money we want to make sure that we have a rich mindset an effective mindset around money um and we have to understand that everything we want is outside of our comfort zone right uh, we are going to have to risk time and money ours and other people's that's just how it is if you're not willing to do that that's fine you jobs for you if you're if you're like no i've got to have a business i to do my own there's i don't know any successful business owners that haven't risked large amounts of time and money um, and again that's why I, I kind of come back to the training the systems and processes that can mitigate that risk it's not going to eliminate it but it can at least make sure you're going in the right direction um that said the benefit is as an entrepreneur you will have to master the skill of handling capital effectively. Uh, mental capital, emotional capital, physical capital, everything has to be managed properly. The good news is once you get that right, it is going to solve a lot of problems for you in your service business, in your life, in your personal financial dealings. Um, so it is, um, it's an opportunity. It's a great way to learn, right? You can go to school. It's, you know, I feel like school, I'm not without getting on another rant. I feel like school sometimes like playing poker with someone else's money with, no, with not real money, right? It's easy to kind of make the moves when they're still there. And school is a lot of talking about stuff. As you own a business and run a business, you will learn about capital risk, uh, either the hard way that's expensive and painful or, um, 
you know, let's say a smart guy learns from his mistakes, expensive and painful, smarter people learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, that's why you're here, right? We're giving you, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've made some really great decisions about money and some really poor decisions about money. I want to take this time to distill that down into what you need. So if any of this is scratching where you're at, you're like, holy heck, this is what I need. Give me more. Um, GrowMyServiceCompany.com has got all the resources that we've got. Uh, again, at the time of this recording, we don't have anything for sale. We're just giving, I think you get a copy of my book. You can read, um, you can join our Facebook group, any access, all the podcasts, blogs, videos, uh, YouTube, everything. Everything we offer at growmyservicecompany.com. You can follow us on Instagram, Instagram forward slash uh, growmyservicecompany.com. Give me a shout out, I'll get you a copy of my book. Hopefully that was helpful. Love to hear from you, Clean Nation or Service Nation. Talk soon.